Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to configure your PFSense firewall to route to the Pi hole that we set up in the previous video. If you don't have a PFSense router, then don't worry about it. The previous guide will cover everything that you need, but you have to do a little bit extra in PFSense if you happen to be using that. PFSense is a community-based firewall that adds a lot of features that power users are interested in. So the first thing that we need to do to get this set up is to set a DHCP static mapping in PFSense. So we're going to log into the PFSense router. And then here we're going to go to services, DHCP server. And then at the bottom, there's a section for DHCP static mappings. So we want to set up one for the Pi hole. To do this, we need to get the MAC address of the Ethernet adapter in the Pi hole. So we're going to connect to the Pi hole. So we issue the ifconfig command. Then the value that we're looking for is right here. So we want to copy this value. Then we want to paste that in here. Then provide the IP address that you want to statically link the Pi Hole to and provide a name. I've called it Pi Hole and a description if you like. These are the only values that are required. When you've entered these values, go to the bottom and click Save, and you may be prompted to apply those changes. In the previous video, when we set up the Pi Hole, we set it up with a static IP address. We want to go ahead and change that to DHCP. So to do that, we're going to edit the YAML file for NetPlan. So that is uh, slack etc slack netplan 50 cloud init.yaml. And then here we're going to get rid of the lines that we added last time for all the static mappings. And we're going to just change the file so it looks like this with DHCP4 set to true. Once you've done this, go ahead and save the file and then refresh the net plan by issuing the command sudo net plan apply. Now we need to edit the DHCP server so that it will give out the IP address of the Pi hole as the DNS. So we're going to go to services DHCP server and then in this section where it says DNS servers you're going to provide the IP address of the Pi hole and then we're going to click save to apply the changes and it may prompt you to apply at the top. Next we want to log into the Pi hole and here we want to change the upstream provider from the quad 9 to our PFSense. So we're going to go to settings and DNS and then here we're going to uncheck the quad 9 options and we're going to check the custom here we're going to provide the IP address of the PFSense router. So click Save, and then we want to make sure that the leases are all assigned. So we can go to Status, DHCP Leases, and see all our devices. Here we're concerned about the Pi Hole, and the static mapping is working fine. So we should be good to go now. We can go to any client to test that the DHCP server is sending the appropriate DNS configuration to the clients. So we're going to log into a server on the network and we're going to issue an NS lookup to a domain that should be blocked. In this case, it is doubleclick.net. And as we see there, the doubleclick.net returns back a 000 from the Pi Hole server. So it is working uh, on a Windows machine you would need to issue a flush DNS command first. So here we'll issue the IP config flush DNS. And then we can test the NS lookup here as well to ensure that it's working. So we can see it is hitting the pile and it is being dropped. On a Windows machine, uh, you should be able to do IP config slash renew to relinquish your previous lease and get a new one. On Windows 10, it seems that the firewall or some rule may be blocking that, so you might have to reboot, but that depends on your Windows configuration. So if you click Renew, and it just sits there for a period of time, and then eventually comes back with an error, just reboot your machine, and that should be enough to get the new lease to connect to the Pi Hole as your DNS. If you wanted to make an exemption, then you could actually go to Services, DHCP Server, and 
create a static mapping for the device that you want to exempt from this rule. So let's say, for example, we wanted our home server to be exempt. Then we would make the static mapping rule just like we did previously on the Pi hole, except here we would explicitly provide DNS servers like 8.8.8.8 or any other upstream DNS provider. And then anytime this machine would connect to the PFSense and request the DHCP lease, he would actually get sent these DNS settings instead of the route out to the Pi hole. So keep that in mind if you have devices that you would like to be able to bypass Pi hole, for example, Apple TV, trying to run the Google app, uh, videos will get dropped and things of that nature, uh, potentially. So if you need to do that, here's how you would do that. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you. We'll talk to you later.